I'm Rachel, welcome to my channel. Today, we are going to be moving some furniture around so that way we can make a seed starting area. This is only going to be a temporary change for my houseplant arrangement, but it's a change that I need to make so that way our seeds are in an area where they can get sunlight and have a grow light and also where we will see them all the time so that way we actually remember to miss them. <laughs> I have a video of me setting up this houseplant area that I will link in the iCard and in the description box, but it's my favorite spot in my whole house. I love to sit here. I sit here multiple times a day. It's definitely going to go back this way, but it's going to be going into my craft room, and my craft room table is going to be going into the kitchen. So the kitchen is actually where I do most of my crafting anyways because I've been doing a lot of it for my videos and I like to work on projects while I have food on the stove or something while I'm cooking. So I actually have a little craft area in my kitchen and since this table has a leaf or actually has two leaves then I can pop up the leaf and use it for supplies if I need to um, or more seeds because I'm sure it's probably going to get full of seeds. <laughs> But it's a pretty decent sized table and so even without any of the leaves popped up, it can still hold a lot of seeds. But you know, when we're working on things, we can pop it up and plant more things and I think it will be really nice to have for the spring. So yeah, let's get to moving things. This is the current setup. You can see that I have my kitchen table over here and then this is a chest that I hold actually nothing in because the hinges don't work and I just put stuff on top of it. So that's all my crafting things I use all the time in my sewing machine. So I'll put those up there and I don't know where I'm going to move my fiddly fig but we'll find a spot. So this telephone chair needs to be moved and this is where we're going to put the table. And I also have a milking stool that's going to have to be moved but uh, my tea station thing is going to have to stay there of course. I don't think Gunther likes being on the table, Jacob. I'm <laughs> putting more and more wormies together. This is lettuce. Um, these are all, you can tell they're stretching towards the light. These were in my southern window and the windows are the kind of windows that they block enough of the sunlight coming in so that way 
these kinds of plants are still reaching for it and they're not really getting adequate amounts of light. So that's why I wanted to do the lamp so that way they get some supplemental light. And also this is a western window so they're not getting direct light all day anyways. So yeah, hopefully that will brighten up this color on these a little bit and make it so that way they're not so lakey. My husband has some grass that he started, some rye for the chickens, basically to use as fodder. But the cats, well, Sentinel dumped it over because it was precariously on a table. So that's why it looks so funny. But it's all coming up right in one big clump right here now. I'll need to tape all the sides down on these boxes, but these have a lot more seed starts. My husband made these kind of tall. You can tell they're a lot taller than normal ones. So that way the roots have a long ways to go down and they can just have more time to stay in here. But these have like watermelons and I don't know what all he grew. He just put a whole bunch of things in here. So we have those and then I also have two more of like these kinds of seed trays to fill up too. So um, we're definitely gonna be using the leaf for a little while until we can start putting things out in the garden. As you can see, the kitchen is pretty darn big, so we still have plenty of room. I mean, we could even pull that out and pull up the other leaf if we need more space, but I don't think things will get enough sun if we do that. So we actually have had uh, vertical gardens up here before too. That was, <laughs> we used old salad containers and strung them up. That worked pretty good when we were growing more microgreen types of things. Um, but we got kind of bored of that. But we still have lots of room here, plenty of room to open up the dishwasher and still walk around. And so I think it, well, oh, we also have more containers for growing things over there. Here, let me show you. I don't know what my husband has this for. He had his worms in it, but as you just saw, he uh, put them in a pan for some reason. <laughs> so... Uh, we've been saving some plastic things to plant things in, like where the lettuce is in. That was in a that was a chicken, one of those rotisserie chicken things, and it had a dome. Of course, I still have it, um, but it grew the seeds really fast, and well, lettuce grows really fast, anyways. But we figure we can use this as drainage. It has things so that way humidity can escape. <laughs> So I think it would work better for something like sprouts though, since it's so shallow, but we'll see. And then we've been saving our little seaweed trays because these are something you can't recycle and we use a lot of them because we eat a lot of seaweed. So we thought we would try this out. I was thinking we could put some more of those rolled up paper ones in here. The rolled up paper things, you just take some paper, this is paper from a phone book, or you can use newspaper, and you roll it around a bottle and crush in this bottom part, and then you can use it to plant things in. And the, the roots, from what I've seen, is that the roots will actually go through the paper. But I don't like things, the, all those seed starting things that supposedly biodegrade, none of them work, uh, but it seems like this will actually work. I mean, paper biodegrades pretty good. Um, the worms can actually eat it and things, so it's not so much of an issue unlike the Coco Coyer or those other awful things. There's so many different things that are just awful and they always choke out the roots of a plant. You need help with your jacket? There you go. When I go to plant my plants, I actually look for more roots around them because I find that the more roots a plant has when I go to plant it, the better it does for me in my soil and in my weather conditions. I live in a high desert and um, the plants need to be able to root in really good, really fast so they can soak up as much water as possible. So when I buy plants, um, usually it's usually alyssum that has this um, because I'll get a whole like six pack of it and there'll be one plant that's kind of has a piddly root start 
the flowers look pretty good and it's growing, but it's not given enough time because the seeds started later or something, whereas the rest of them, that they have a lot more roots, those ones do really good when I plant them out. But the little ones with not very many roots, those don't do good. So if I can take those off, which you know I can, and when I leave them to where they can grow more roots longer for inside, and then I plant them out, then they will actually take root really well and establish themselves. Oh, also, if you use eggs to start your seeds in, like eggshells, make sure you take the plant out of the eggshells because it's not going to grow through the eggshells. It'll mostly grow up and over it if it, you plant it deep enough, and then it's yeah, that's gonna cause more problems. I hope that this video was helpful and you liked it. Um, if you did and you want more videos like this, then please do subscribe and um, turn on the notification bell. Have a really great day, you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye!